Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman here doing the weekend update. It is October 1st, 2016. Let's get started reviewing a little of the trade from last week, and then we're going to be exploring some volatility products here quite heavily. First and foremost, in the SPX closes the week at 2168 with what I can only describe as decent volatility and some rather chopped out trade. A lot of unpredictability, multiple reversals throughout trading days. One of the things I want to step away from some of the intraday trade, which I have to tell you right up front, absolutely love it. And one of the first things I'm displaying down below over here is historical volatility. So if you're kind of following along, historical volatility is the, if you will, actual movement of a particular product. And the reason, you know, of course, we're uh, as traders, especially on an intraday, we're loving some of the recent intraday volatility. It's because this entire summer we were stuck in Never Never Land, which is absolutely nothing in terms of movement. So one of the first glances I want you to get is the increase here in price action in the SPX has been fairly dramatic. However, you know, you wouldn't know that by looking at, for example, the VIX. So the VIX dumps back down into the 13 level here, okay? And again, if you've not necessarily looked at the VIX, all the VIX is, it's a measurement, okay, of option premiums approximately 30 days out in the SPX. I know that's kind of a convoluted thought, but all the VIX is, is a calculation, okay, of volatility. and the irony of the VIX is, uh, again, if you take a look at the VIX recently and, you know, it's spiked up here a couple of weeks back, it's kind of been coming back off a little bit. But if you look at the historical volatility, now that's the, if you will, actual movement of the VIX itself is doing nothing but increasing, but the volatility in the VIX is coming off, okay, which is exactly one of the premises of what I want to discuss during this weekend update here is why I'm not looking at the VIX anymore because it is not doing a decent job of displaying risks either present or future in the marketplace. The VIX is, you know, by the time the VIX goes off, that is by the time the VIX spikes, everybody already sees the smoke and where there's smoke, there's fire, right? And unfortunately, the VIX is, you know, it's late to the party. It's like the second or third fire truck showing up to the fire. But what I do want to display to you, what is, I think, critical right now for traders to start to understand, start to comprehend what's become far more effective than looking at the VIX is really trying to discern what the volatility futures are doing. So we're going to take you right now into a glance of the volatility futures. Now, it's, this is not critical that you necessarily trade this product, but I think that understanding these volatility futures can help you immensely in really interpreting risk of the overall marketplace, because clearly everyone right now just wants to know, where are we going? Are the s and is going up, are the s and is going down, okay? The best foresight that I can give you over the next few weeks you know, clearly there's going to be some turbulence the next couple of weeks in the marketplace. And I say that, all right, we all know that there's some news that's going to be coming out regarding the election. There's multiple debates coming out over here. You name it, it's going to be on the table inside of the next four, five, six weeks out. Okay. The trade is going to be and feel extremely unpredictable. It's going to be, again, what I call kind of chopped out fast, heavy volume, okay? When you think of choppy trade, very often you think of like, oh, that sounds kind of boring. Quite the opposite. Sometimes the choppy trade over there can be met with high volume, tremendous uncertainty. And one of the things that I'm seeing right now being reflected in these volatility futures is just that. So let's let's dig into the volatility futures and really how to interpret these volatility futures. So one of the things that stands out to me is if you look at the volatility futures, and this is symbol, and this is on Thinkorswim, so the symbols do vary from platform to platform, it's forward slash VX. 
And I'm going to start by looking at the active contract out here. Now, there's an active contract. It trades some pretty substantial volume. Now, this is after hours trade from, of course, Friday. Nevertheless, you only want to look at the volatility contracts, okay, that are what we term the primary contracts. That would be the October. These weeklies, okay, they don't trade very heavily, so omit them from this discussion. I'm kind of crossing them out over here. What I want you to do is to look at the 18-day volatility contract, which is the OC, okay, versus the NOV, which is a 46-day volatility contract. Now, what can be discerned in here? So if you've ever heard the terms contango and or backwardation, that's kind of what we're looking at right now. And there's a decent what we term contango. Now, all this kind of deals with is where is the current, you know, or active contract. That's the 18-day contract is trading right around 1544, okay? Yes, this is supposed to be a four. Right around 1544, the next contract out is trading, we'll call it right at 17 even. So the differential between them is somewhere near $1.50. One thing that I track throughout the course, okay, of a given month, a given week, is the differential between, for example, the active contract and the duration contract. And you're like, well, why? <laughs> why would it, why would it, who would ever want to track this? Okay. When risk starts to hit markets, what often happens is this, which is considered a contango, okay, can actually level out. You know, if risk is really kind of hitting the fan, you would see this short duration contract. It might be trading at 17 and the longer duration contract would be at 17. What does that kind of mean to you? It means the risk right now is as large as the risk in the future. Now, if you think about what that's saying, think about what that's saying for a second. The future 46 days is the unknown. Like, you know, 46 days from now, a lot can happen in marketplaces, right? And when you look at it and you think to yourself, well, how can the risk be as great in the next 18 days? Well, I'll tell you what, what backwardation is, okay, is when risk in the short duration can even pump up, for instance, to 18 or 19, okay? Where risk in the short duration is even greater than risk in the future. And if you think about that again, it's like totally backwards. That's, well, it's backwardation. I mean, it's completely backwards. You're like, what? I mean, for the most part, when you see the, the short duration volatility futures exceed the longer duration volatility futures, it just means risk is hitting the proverbial fan. Okay. But one thing that I have noticed is, okay, this risk analysis between right now and a further duration, it's tightened to $1.50 all throughout the summer. And we sat in a contango that was one of the largest I've ever seen. It was like $2.30 differential. So this contango and this differential has tightened up quite substantially. Now, what does that mean? It means the markets are actually pricing right now, all right, edginess, if you will, in them. And I think that I can even display this for you. How do you display it? Well, I go to a chart. We don't need no stinking chart. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what's called depth. And this is what they call product depth. And if you've never seen a product depth curve before, well, the first time you see it, it's a little bit intimidating, okay? What you're looking at right now are two separate product depth curves. And this is usually where people are like, what, 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 what? <clears throat> what it's doing right here is it's showing you the active volatility contract plotted versus the next volatility contract, versus the next volatility contract, versus the further out volatility contract. Now think about that, it's depth. So what it's doing is it's actually taking 18 days and 46 days and further out in time, and it's actually plotting them against one another. So why do I look at this? Why do I even bother studying it? Well, first of all, as I said, this can very definitively display to you, okay, the market's intent in terms of risk. So right now, with the markets 
okay, that have rallied back up. It's it's all okay. The markets have rallied back up. We're all going to be okay. Yet the risk is seeing something very different than the S&P futures are displaying. Then the, the VIX is displaying, no, 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 there's no risk. There's no risk. Don't even worry about it. The S&P futures, I mean, we're stones throw off all-time highs. But back here, you're wondering why there's two different depth curves over here. Well, because I'm showing right now, okay, on your screen, this is what the depth curve looks like at this moment in time. This is a depth curve from this summer. As I said, I track it. Okay, how do I track it? The depth curve over the summer, I mean, the differential between the front and back expiration was huge. It was absolutely huge. Okay, so the curve looks right now drastically different. And again, this should be taken into account as the market right now, again, is pricing a lot more risk and a lot more uncertainty according to to the volatility futures. If you're curious about the depth curves over here, uh, I'm actually running a curve, the most recent curve, which is today, October 1st. So it's actually showing you the depth curve today. And then I'm also showing a curve from, I just picked a, you know, a date out there of no significance, but of, uh, you know, uh, July 11th. And if you want to see other depth curves, you know, you can go even back Back in time, you want to see some wild depth curves. And if you ever played around with this tool, you can even go into like, you know, early February and play around with different uh, depth curves from the February time frame. Uh, again, this takes a, a little bit, a little bit of work, a little bit of know-how on the part of the user out there. And that is, uh, again, if you've never played around with these depth curves, this is a, uh, the current depth curve and here is back in February. Why do I show you February? Because this actually went into a backwardation. That's when you know, you kind of compare and contrast these you are like, Oh, I kind of, kind of get it. This is when risk was imminent. The market felt like it was falling apart. Here is current risk. And if you recognize what I'm saying is the summer was like, Nope, there's absolutely no risk with the S and P's trading at where they currently are 2156 this summer we were trading right in and around this range okay at 2156 and the market was saying no there's no risk now we're trading the exact same range but the market is actually anticipating a whole lot more risk it's actually said you know hold on we're getting we're getting to it and it's something i think that it's it's more important right now than what you think because one thing i i cannot stress this uh, enough is when you start looking at the marketplace and again I'm gonna blank the chart here and make this a little easier to see but when you start looking at the marketplace here's 30 days okay, and I'm just gonna zoom into uh, some of the most recent time frame here happens to be again even shorter duration since the volatility kind of kicked in uh, again what we're looking at is the S&P futures as I said fairly quick chopped out volatile trade increasing actual price movement in markets the predictability to the future is negligible the one thing that i'll continue to stress though right now is that i built a huge amount of my career in trading around selling options premium and at this point in time i'm telling you the option premiums are just not displaying okay what you would believe for the amount of risk that's on the table and if you again if you're kind of you know tuning in you're like oh, I'm not exactly sure what what that entails there's a great way to look at this just go over to studies okay go add study and look again at historical volatility so I'll zoom in this is actual movement of the market is picking up substantially that's movement of the market. I mean, it's we're starting to be rocking out there, right? And the volatility futures are showing it. The VIX isn't showing it. But the VIX is what prices options in the SPX. And if you're going to sell premium right now, you know, you're going to sell yourself into a shallow grave. And I, I say this, and it's, it's, you know, not easy for me to say it, but you have implied volatility in one of the lower percentiles, but actual movement of the market, She's rocking out there, and that's what you better keep in mind. 
You know, when you look at like, for instance, the next six or the eight weeks ahead of us, right? Yeah, there's an election coming up. There's 50 other items besides the election between now and the election that are going to get this market rocking. And some of the political news is starting to impact markets. And I believe that's why the volatility futures see it. It's a much more like professional trading vehicle. They see it. The VIX, it's 30 days out. It's blind. Absolutely blind. I mean, if you looked at the SPX right now, which I look at every single day, you look at the SPX and you look at these volatilities, right? And you go out even to where there's an election out there, people, and you see like a 15 vol, you kind of laugh almost. And again, 15 vol might not make sense to most people, but that is inherently and incredibly low. This volatility is being suppressed. I don't want to see people get their heads taken off in this. You recognize over just, you know, the next, what, two weeks of trade out here, volatility is in the, the 10 or 11. That's like the VIX. <clears throat> this is like the VIX being at 11 for the next six trading days. You really believe that, that kind of risk? Come on. If you look at the SPX, and I'll cruise back over to the chart for just one last moment. You look at the SPX. This is a product, okay, that multiple times, and I'll zoom very, very tightly in over here, multiple times this week, and this is just during the live trading session. That's 21.45 all the way up to 21.72. <clears throat> Do the math really quick. That's almost a 30-point move, okay? What did we move yesterday? Well, it's, you know, 21.75 all the way down to 21.56. We're getting 20 and 30-point moves being thrown off per day. 20 and 30 point moves per day. And you realize that for the next six days, it's only pricing in a $28 expectation. So I sit back from this and I remain in my stance. I'm not selling any premium, okay, until what I call the risk hits the fan out there. Until we see markets that are incredibly efficient right now, they're going to explode and they're going to go the other way, okay? It's all going to be hinging on some type of a catalyst, but we're throwing out warning signs. The volatility futures okay, are displaying right now, ultimately, a lot more risk than they were just a few weeks ago. And again, I don't think traders are seeing it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at TheoTrade. Join me all throughout the course of this week in the TheoTrade chat room. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.